At the heart of the French capital Paris is the Louvre Museum, originally the residence of the French kings in the city before it became a museum after the French Revolution. In 1988, the Louvre Pyramid was completed as one of President François Mitterrand's grand projects and is one of two pyramids, one visible above ground and an inverted one below ground. And if the American author Dan Brown is to be believed, the inverted pyramid is a chalice pointing down to yet another pyramid which houses the tomb of Mary Magdalene in a secret chamber. So the question is, is Mary Magdalene buried right under here? Well, this gentleman seems to think so. But I think there's something far more interesting under this incredible construction that you least expect to find. A medieval castle, or rather, the remains of one. It seems incredible, but underneath the Louvre are the walls you can see behind me of what was the royal palace in, in about 1200. So these are castle walls underneath a much later museum that have somehow survived all these centuries. And there they are stretching behind me. You can see the turrets all the way down there. Where a museum now stands was once a medieval fortress defending Paris against Norman-controlled England in the 12th century. King Philip II, also known as Philip Augustus, secured the independence of France and even audaciously attempted an invasion of England. Incredible that his castle still survives deep under the Louvre. The museum has many spectacular treasures, including the Great Sphinx of Tanis, a sculpture that may date as far back as the Great Pyramid. The Louvre is literally stuffed full of Greek and Roman statues. This is a Roman era statue of the Greek goddess Athena that once stood at the Parthenon. And of course, the Louvre owns the famous Venus de Milo, discovered on the Greek island of Milos in 1820 and displayed at the museum ever since. It depicts Aphrodite, the Greek goddess of love, but is named after the Roman version of that goddess, Venus. Up an impressive flight of stairs and we encounter the winged victory of Samothrace, which represents Nike standing on a representation of a ship's bow. Found on a Greek island in the 1860s, the head and arms are sadly missing, but the sense of movement is still vivid. On through the endless and ornate galleries, and we come to a space that always captivates me. A long room housing some of the greatest painters of all time, including Leonardo da Vinci. And as everybody knows, the Mona Lisa lives at the Louvre, the most popular work by da Vinci and completely mobbed by tourists these days. Sitting behind bulletproof glass and snapped endlessly. And this is as close as I got to the Mona Lisa. And then we come to a grim depiction of Napoleon realizing his own limitations as he led the Grand Army into Russia. Behind me we have Napoleon coming a cropper in Russia uh, when his armies were defeated more by the cold than by the Russians. And maybe it's a shame that Hitler never actually took a good look at this picture before he invaded Russia over 100 years later. Then on a happier note, the female figure of liberty leads the French people in a successful revolution in 1830 that toppled the monarch, King Charles X. This was painted by Eugène Delacroix, a leading figure in the French Romantic school. And it still inspires young revolutionaries today with its vigor and call to action. So I must leave the Louvre, 
but I recommend you pay to visit very soon. Thank you.